Holy God, fill us this day with new breath, and we shall be Good morning and happy Easter. As always, it's good to have you here with us today, uh, especially today because it is the greatest feast of the church year, the, the greatest celebration in the history of the world, really. Uh, Jesus Christ died for our sins and then he rose from the dead. He did all that for us. Today, Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of Jim Sheasley. And uh, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You give light to those in darkness. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, Rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our, our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be made visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testified that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scriptures that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I hope today you were able to endure the singing of the responsorial psalm. I have to say that the only thing more nerve-wracking than singing in public is singing when somebody's shining a camera at you. But, um, you know, we decided to do that today just because, well, it is Easter. It's a special day. It's a day that we have to celebrate with a little bit more intensity than normal. And so we did. And we should continue to do so. Make sure you understand that this isn't just another Sunday. This is the Sunday. Uh, This is the day we celebrate the fact that Jesus triumphed over sin and death and won for us everlasting life. And it really is something we have to make sure we speak about, something we proclaim, and something that we share with the world. It's supposed to color our vision of life day after day, and it's a joy that we're supposed to share with the people we meet. And that's what I want you to realize today, that last part. You know, we, well, when I was younger and I had a regular job, I worked for an electrical contractor in Cleveland. And um, it was an okay job, and, but what I really liked about it was I had a desk in this back room and there were two salesmen and uh, this young lady and she and I worked on projects together and we'd sit there and talk to each other all day and we'd talk to the salesmen while they were in and, and uh, it was a nice, a nice environment. Uh, the four of us really got along well. Um, thing was, you know, we did what most people do on Monday morning. So, do you do anything interesting this weekend? And when people would ask me that, I would talk about maybe playing poker with the guys on Friday night, or maybe if we had a softball game, I'd tell them about that, or we all had brown season tickets and went to a lot of Indians games, and so maybe I'd tell them about the sporting event I saw. And that was that, and you know, everybody would share their weekend experiences. But I think about that now, and I don't remember if I always interjected in the middle. Then I went to church. Um, I hope I did. I can't remember if I did or I did not. Uh, But I hope I did. Why? Because we need to make sure, especially in this world we live in, where people are turning away from the faith, that the people around us know that somebody who's their friend, somebody whom they may love, uh, has embraced this life of faith because of the good things we're celebrating today. We have a responsibility to do that. You know, St. Peter was visiting a man's home in our first reading, and he decided, well, he got up and began to talk about Jesus. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did. So he talked about how, well, the sort of ministry that Jesus had embarked upon. But then he also talked about the fact that Jesus died 
by being hung on a tree, he says. And then he also testifies that Jesus rose again. We saw him. He was... He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. That's what Peter's life was about. Peter was a witness to everything Jesus had done, everything he had said. He was a witness to the crucifixion, probably from a great distance, and he was a witness to the resurrection. And he had to share that good news with everybody. And the same thing is supposed to be true with us. We live in a world in which there is a great deal of sadness. We live in a world in which people are depressed about all sorts of things. Uh, life can be hard. Uh, but the world is becoming a darker and darker place. I think we can see that. And I don't mean that to be judgmental. I mean there's just more misery than there used to be. But where should the joy come from? How can the sense of happiness be rekindled? Well, people can re-embrace the life of faith. And they can only hear about it if we tell them. Uh, we have the responsibility to say, you know, I believe in this God who loved us enough to send us his son. We believe in this son, who, the son of God, who came and died on the cross in payment for our sins. And he rose again and won for us everlasting life. We have a God of mercy. We have a God who's patient. We have a God who understands that sometimes we go astray, sometimes we commit sins, and he doesn't approve of that, but he understands it, and he never stops loving us. He loved us enough that he took that burden, the burden of those sins, the price that needed to be paid in justice, and he took it upon himself, and he bore it, he paid it, and he rose again afterwards. And that's the sort of Lord that we love. That's the sort of Lord that we serve. And that's a story that needs to be shared. And so what I think we all need to do is, when you go to work tomorrow, uh, say, and somebody asks, so what did you do this weekend? Well, say either, I went to Mass on Sunday, or I watched a video of the Mass on Sunday. And if they raise their eyebrows, say, yeah, and it was great, and here's why. And then tell them, it's all about how much God loves us. It's all about what God is willing to do for us. It's about the fact that God understands that we go astray, that we commit sins, but he's not only patient with us, he's merciful. And so he paid for our sins himself, and then he rose from the dead, and it was such a great day because that's what that celebration's about. I know life isn't always easy, but there's joy because I know I'm not going to have to face the difficult moments alone. I know that God's going to be with me. I know that I can lean on him in any circumstance and he'll help me to get through it or to endure it or to solve the problem. I don't know how, but it works and it gives me a sense of purpose in life and it gives me a sense of joy and a sense of hope. And that's what you need to do. Give him a speech just like that because people need to hear the good news. They needed it 2,000 years ago. They need it today, and we're supposed to be the ones who, like St. Peter, go out and say, this is the way it is, this is the God that I love, this is why. And who knows, you may change a mind, you may change a heart, you may have somebody who goes, huh, that makes sense. They may argue with you about it, but at least they'll have heard, and at least you'll have said it, and that ultimately is the greatest deed you can do, and the best gift you can give. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so now I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do and all his empty promises. I, I do. do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I, I do. do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I, I do. do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Water of life, Jesus our light, journey from death to new life. Water of life, Jesus our light, journey from death to new life. Fountain of light, new sight for the blind. As heirs of salvation, we have confidence to approach God with the needs of our world. The Holy Spirit may continue to guide the church as she proclaims the resurrection of Jesus to all the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That national and international leaders may be empowered by the Holy Spirit in serving their people as Christ came to serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The resurrection may provide hope to all who mourn the death of loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's love may shine through the words and actions of all in this community of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Jim Sheasley, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the souls of all the faithful departed, that, having died with Christ, they may soon find peace and rest in his loving care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Father, hear the prayers we offer today through your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Lawrence our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To Jim Sheasley, for whom this Mass is being offered, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please pray with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. As we leave today, I'd like to thank you again for being with us. Uh, there is a, a little commercial today, and that is, um, well, there's a book for sale. And the book is called, This is Ginger. Now, it's not my book. I uh, won't have any financial rewards from it. But one of our viewers, whose name is Joy Peeler, uh, and I think she lives in Florida, uh, writes children's books. And she was so taken with our favorite dog that she decided to write a biography, really, a story of Ginger's life. And so 
Anyway, the book has been written and it's been published and it's available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, it's called This is Ginger by Joy Peeler. And um, I'm in the book, unfortunately. I uh, did not want to be identified, so I had her call me Father Ted. But then she put my picture in the book anyway. And, and made me look fat. <laughs> um, so anyway, but it's, it's a really nice book. So if you want to buy a copy, please do. Uh, it's funny, interesting, and endearing. So anyway, uh, it's a good book. Uh, so thank you for being here with us today. And I do hope you have a happy Easter celebration today and for the next 50 days. Thanks again. Jesus, take me away and take me away.